Hello everyone, welcome to this new chat with teacher Hernan. Today we are with Gazwan. He's originally from Iraq, living in San Francisco, working as a professional chef. He comes today to share a little bit of his experience of what was it to him moving from Iraq to United States 12 years ago. So we normally call him G. So let's call him Mr. G today. Mr. G, uh, tell us a little bit about you. Yes, hi. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me here. I would love to uh, share and educate or aware of others. Uh, my name is Ghazwan. Once again, I am originally from Iraq. Uh, I currently live in San Francisco. I'm a successful chef. And uh, and also I have uh, two other gigs. I'm, uh, I have my own catering business and I'm a party promoter. Okay, that's lovely. Lovely to hear yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Mr. G, uh, what does it mean for you to be far away from your country? Very far away, actually. Uh, well, yeah, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a bit sweet and bitter and sweet, uh, if it's the right term. Uh, for me, I, I'm now, this is my new home. Uh, but obviously, if you're far from home, the person, wherever they move and they feel comfortable and they feel free, uh, they can call that at home. But the, the one thing that I miss is basically my, my family. Uh, but once again, for over 12 years now, I made friends and I call them as my family now so you, you we find i am away from my country as well and we what we do is we find different ways to fill these gaps correct yes you always make things to um like um how you say it um uh, made it make, make it comfortable for you and uh, and uh, adopt it adopt things so yeah i you know, it's a couple of things. Uh, I can't say I miss the food over there because I'm a chef, so I cook this, the same food now. <laughs> but uh, I miss family, a uh, couple of culture things that I miss. But other than that, I'm, I'm here adopted and I'm living my life. What made you leave the country? So in 2003, uh, uh, when the invasion of Iraq happened, uh, I decided to join the U.S. Army as a translator because I have the language already. I already speak English. Uh, when I was a kid, I lived in Europe with my parents. Uh, so I already speak that language. Uh, when the invasion happened, uh, I joined the army. And then after that, um, I, that decision that I made actually was against me because my uh, people in my country came uh, as a translator, I became a target. So I couldn't live uh, safe in my uh, city. So I left. And then uh, I went to the United Nation uh, in Jordan, Amman, and I told them my story and I'm here. How difficult has been for you keeping in mind your original or your originally passport like your passport from iraq has it been difficult for you to live in the states and to adapt well i'm one of the lucky ones uh i'm the lucky ones because uh first of all when i move when i flew from uh, uh, iraq to jordan amman that's where i was staying there that was the difficult time, actually. More difficult than being here. It okay. was more difficult. How come? Because I had the uh, Iraqi passport you just mentioned. I had uh, in, in Jordan, in that time, we were not really living free there or welcome there. I, You can't get a job, you can't, you know. So at that time, we were not we were not having that comfort. It took me three years 
uh, to waiting uh, United Nations the process and then I came here when I came here I didn't have any problem because I didn't carry my passport I carry you come here immediately you can get an ID identification California identification that you can do it immediately as long as you have the social security once again I was one of the lucky ones so when I came here I got all my papers ready everything was ready for me so I didn't have any problems with <clears throat> you know carrying the only thing is when you come to a new country or new city <clears throat> you have to know their culture and what they like and you have to convert yourself to that environment that's the only difficult that i had you know uh, especially as my career i have to get a new uh, learn new ingredients and new flavors what's the american uh, uh, palate how do they like what they like to eat that's all the challenge that i had other than that being an an an, an immigrant or or a, a asylum basically uh, there were no problems actually when you mentioned you were one or you are one of the luckies yes what does it mean to you and what's the opposite i mean like what would be the opposite then do you know any stories that you want to share with the audience yeah i mean i i met several uh, a lot of people i know now people are with no papers with no papers here and they are struggling because they can't have a, a legal job i mean we call it under the table jobs which is really basically it's abused i mean whoever is paying you they're abusing you because they can you know tell you whatever and that because that's all you income that you have from this person uh so they're they're suffering uh, um but their their case is, is is a bit complicated why i'm lucky one because once again i worked for the us army when i came here everything when the united nation hear your story and they you know do a research and get all the paperwork for you when i came here i got an organization called irc international rescue committee they took me from the airport they gave me a shelter which is an apartment they gave me a, a, a new new bed new mattress new pillow uh, i still remember that uh, even even a, a, a clock and and a, a, a timer uh, and then after that they will do all the paperwork for you they will walk you they will take you to the office the social security office the with, with another person if you don't speak english there's a translator all this helps and then after that they will give me a, a paycheck you know uh, to, to help me um, what else transportation all that that's how i was lucky and this is in 2008 now the other thing is how other people suffered is once again um for example i have one of my friends who's been here for i think five years now uh so he have no paperwork so he have to work another thing unfortunately uh he's working as a prostitute and that's the only way that he can live and survive uh it's not it's not the best way to to make money but this is this is what it is he doesn't have any paperwork he have to have a lawyer the lawyer costs about $3000 um Yeah, tough. It's really tough. How come how come going back to Iraq is not an option? Uh This is a a really complicated for me personally. Sorry. For others there was no I don't think there's a problem. I I know so many Iraqi friends here. they went back after getting the green card or after being a citizen i am a citizen i've been citizen for over 6 years now so i i'm a citizen 
but uh, uh, for me, I was once again working for the U.S. Army, and I'm one of uh, from a very well-known background, uh, uh, the family and the city, uh, and uh, I became a target. So uh, people tried to assassinate me several times, several times, not one or two. I have stories and stories about that, but uh, we take we take uh, we take things bad things with us to remember it uh, and and learn from it, but try to put it in the past. You know, um, I wish I can go and visit at least visit my parents, but it's not an option right now uh, because it's not safe for me. That's that's very interesting. Uh, what you just said that you wish you could go back and at least to visit, and and that's something I want to talk about. It's about Iraq. When you mention the name of your country, most of the people will think will automatically think on one word, which is war, and they think that there is nothing good in Iraq. That everything is about war and about poverty and all these other social issues that I am very familiar with because I'm from Colombia and we have the same, kind of the same problems there. But me being from Colombia and knowing that we do have lots of things to show make me think that you do have a lot to talk about Iraq. Possibly. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh. Iraq is, Iraq is, is a, a country with 3000 BC over 3000 BC I think it's 6000 it's it's the the beginning of civilization it's the world's it's babylon it's 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 it's, it's the 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 country of the black gold we call it uh, which is the oil uh, it's, it's, it was it was one of the richest country in the world unfortunately correct there was wars and that's where it was cursed what i believe it was cursed but um no, Iraq is beautiful. We have the north, amazing. We have the south. We have Baghdad. We have, and by the way, war stopped. There is no, there is no war. It stops. It. There were like um in like internal, uh, uh, civil war ish after the two thousand and three, but I lived the the wars. Like I lived I lived with the back where was worse and worse and worse. I seen it. So now it's it's a beautiful back, beautiful. Uh, unfortunately, what's happening now it's the uh, religion taking over. When you put a power politics, politics and religion should not be in in the same uh, uh, chair. It should be separate. Uh, unfortunately, now it's just uh, that's the only thing that makes it. Um, complicated but no it's it's safe for others not for me <laughs> not for me but for the others it's safe it's a beautiful country uh once again we have we have mountains we have snow we have deserts we have camels we have goats we have sheep we have cows we have everything that you can imagine and we have gorgeous and generous people and uh, very good looking as well, I, my people. But anyways, <laughs> about the weather, it, it's the weather. I mean, I, I, you just mentioned you just mentioned you have snow and you have everything. But how, like, what would be a good time in the year to visit your country? It varies where where you're visiting. Is it in south or north? I will recommend north of Iraq because north is Kurdistan which is the snow and the mountain and the greens and the waterfalls and all that beautiful things. Uh, what's the best time? I think it's in uh, uh, January, February. So I will say like uh, spring, spring is beautiful. Uh, winter, spring. You just mentioned or you just told us what your country represents for you. Now, we would like to know what does United States represent for you now, your new home? This is my new home. Uh, it's 
it's once again it's bitter and sweet it's good and bad but there is every anywhere everywhere is good and bad so I, i'm not going to talk about that i'm not talking going to talk about politics because we know we know where we're going here uh put that on the side but uh let me tell you i came here in 2008 had no career i had only a couple of dollars in my pocket uh i had no friends and i did not have hope i found the door you open this door and you put your first step now i work in one of the worlds and i started with with first step was 11 dollars an hour okay a basic 11 dollars an hour in san francisco is the one of the world's most expensive city it's nothing and this is in 2008 and uh, when you put a passion and be patient you will be successful uh today once again i work in one of the world's biggest uh social media company uh, as a chef Uh, I w- used to work as an executive chef for California Academy of Science Museum. Uh, I work as executive chef for world's biggest catering company Sodexo. I worked for Twitter, I worked for uh, 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 Google, I worked for so many companies previously and open doors and now I make a lot of money. Uh, I'm, I'm very safe. Uh, I have health insurance. I'm very healthy. Uh, I'm happy. I have a lot a lot of friends and uh so see the difference now this is what now US represent for me. If we say uh the the land of dreams dreams can come true here, but you have to work for it. You have to, you will struggle. You will it's not easy. It's not easy at all. Let me tell you, I cried a lot. I cried a lot. But I believed in myself and that's very very important to believe in yourself and believe what you love and what you want and and love your job. So, you know, when you wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning, I was like, "Oh, oh I I don't want to do this," right? We all have to have that feeling. But if you love your job, great. Look, I'm doing something that I love and I'm getting paid for it. How how beautiful is this? So that's how I feel. So that's the different. You were you applied for the asylum and you and you benefited, right? You got it. What is your suggestion for all these people that are watching us at the moment and are there in your country willing to apply for one? In Iraq? Yeah, I mean like anybody that wants to apply for an asylum. What is the correct what is the correct procedure? What would be like the 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 right steps to be to be a lucky one like you? Yes. Uh first what is your case? It depends on every every person, you know, different case. So uh when you go to the process first you cannot change your words. You know, don't make stories just You, you know you have to if you're making stories unfortunately there's some people that i know made stories but if you make stories just keep it keep it because it's going to take years uh and there's there's actually people just took the month there's i know people a family because i'm single that's why it it, it took it took a, a long time and my case was like too complicated because you know there's a couple of uh, detention and 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 uh you know crazy stories so they have to investigate for that but this this people will take months it varies the only thing is what is your case and what is your story and if you have a story you have to keep on they're going to ask you same questions over and over if you change your stories or your 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 answer it may change the status of 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 your case um 
The process is once again, you go to the United Nation, give your papers and, and tell your story. Uh, I, they gave me a choice where to go. You know, what city you want, what country you want, all this, they asked me. Others, no, they just say, okay, we're going to send you to this country. So once again, you know, if you go as an asylum, every case is different. Every story is different. So I don't really can't give you a whole step by step because it's different stories. I can tell you my, my, my you know, my story, how, how did I went through that? But uh, what is the organization you have to apply to? Because you're saying you're saying that they they will uh, let you pick the country, so that means you did not apply towards United States, did you? No, no, no. I did. I did went to the United uh, United Nation UN. You go to the United Nation office in in Amman in Jordan. That's not in Iraq. Not in Iraq. You have to go outside your country to apply for an asylum. You can't be in your country to apply your, for asylum, right? because you're already in the country. Yeah. Yeah. So it was in Amman, I went to the United Nation and I told them my story. And after an investigation for three years and even the Pentagon, even they, they contact the Pentagon to check all the all the, the story, my story. So once again, every person have his own story. So that was my story. Um, after that, uh, you know, when I got approved, they say you got approved. Uh, you know, there's an organization going to take you there from from uh, when you set in uh, the United States. What city you want? Oh, first, of course, I told them I want to go to America. So they say, what city you want? So I said, San Francisco. Why San Francisco? Because I've heard about it and I just fell in love with it so I just decided to go to San Francisco and then when I came here well of course they you go to the uh, New York first New York from New York I came here uh, there was an organ another organization called IRC and that's they do the whole process for you the whole pro uh, uh, education awareness you know um, help you just to adopt the new life and new city. What do you do during the three years? You know, you said you have to, you had to wait. For I had money. Years. Yeah, Can I didn't work? do nothing. I, I had money. I didn't do nothing. So again, you're <laughs> one of the luckiest one, luckiest ones. Yeah. But others, I've seen, I've seen others, I've seen others a lot, not just one. I mean, I've seen a lot of Iraqis suffering a lot. Once again, they worked under the table, uh, unhealthy environment, uh, poverty. Yeah, I've seen that in Amman. But that previously, now it's a different case, of course. What do you think then about discrimination, for example? I believe you have a a wide view about it absolutely uh we're talking about here or we're talking about another another city as a general case uh i was shocked actually i was shocked when when you identify a person a human being by your skin color i was shocked that you identify people by their religion uh, by their sexuality it's uh, it's 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 really painful and very uh, sad to hear it, but I'm going to say that again. I live in San Francisco. I don't live in other state or other cities that really discrimination and uh, exist there. In here, I've been here for uh, 12 years. I only been insulted once for 12 years, only once, and I remember it very well. Uh, but uh, no one mentioned my skin of color, uh, my background. Uh, they barely, they barely asked me where you're from. 
you know, it's like where you know. No one, no one in here. It's different. But I've been to um, other cities and other states, and how they look at you, and how they treat you. Um, it's sad. That is sad. Discrimination exists. We know that it exists, and I cannot say other countries are better. No, because it's everywhere. Yeah, it's all around the world. That's true. Um, you have mentioned twice religion, and I want to know if religion has been a challenge for you. Not really, because I'm an agnostic. So I believe in all religion. I respect all religions, but I don't practice. Uh, previously, in my country, yes, it was it was a challenge because I've been forced to practice. But now I'm just uh, there's no challenge for me. Okay, Mr. G. Unfortunately, we are running out of time. Uh, at the end of the talks, I always ask the uh, you to give an advice or give a suggestion to all of those that are there at home and can't cope anymore with this pandemic and this COVID-19. What can you tell them? Well, well, regarding this pandemic, just wear masks. That's my advice to them. But uh, uh, beside the pandemic, I just want to say that uh, believing in yourself, as I mentioned, and working hard, Uh, to reach your goal, you can, you will start crawling or one steps and then you'll see the sunshine and uh, you will one day, one day you will reach your goal. So just believe on yourself. That's my advice to you. Perfect. Thanks very much for those words, Mr. G. Uh, and once again, we really appreciate you coming to this talk. Thank you and have a great day.